At the top of Omnisphere is the header, this section over here, and it's always visible no matter which page you're burrowing into in the rest of the interface. Now we have a utility menu here with various file management functions, and we'll go through those in good time. And we also have the multi display name over here. So this is where we see which multi we're working in. Right now there's nothing loaded in, but we can hit this folder icon to call up a browser that browses multis, one of the three types of settings that we're gonna be working with. The three meaning multis, patches, and sound sources. We have navigation buttons here for each of the different parts. So when I click on that, those are the eight parts that we're working in, and they're all empty right now. There's also a multi button here, which gives us another subset of views. This is the regular multi timbral mixer view, and this is the effects routing. We'll go through all this in more detail. We can see live mode and stack mode here, and when they're enabled, we get an indicator in the header here, letting us know if live mode or stack mode are enabled. So important to be aware of that. And we have some system settings. We also finally have a master volume control. This controls the volume for the entire instrument. Now Omnisphere comes with a huge sound library and there are three types of sound libraries and therefore three corresponding browsers that we're gonna use. I just showed you a moment ago the multi-browser. We can click on that there and browse different multis that we can load in. And there's all different kinds of ways of navigating and filtering the searches here. And we'll get into that in another video. This is kind of an overview. So this is the multi-browser and we see the name there. And the idea is you click on one in the search results here and it'll load it in. I'm not gonna load one in for the moment. Now the next kind is the patch browser. And we click here to determine which part we're gonna work in. And let's say I'm gonna start on part one. And this is the field for the patch browser here. And we have the same folder icon, the name and stepper buttons to go through the different patches. And this calls up what looks like the same type of browser, but this is actually the patch browser. And you can see that in the name here. And you can even see from this browser window which part you're in. And here again, we search through and load in patches. So for example, if I want to load in keyboard sound, I can click the category there and I can filter the search any which way and then finally click on a sound and it'll load in that sound. We can see it's loaded and I can play it. And I'm going to hit the X button to close this patch browser. And we can now see that we have the patch blurred line tines currently loaded into part one, which is in a currently unsaved or unnamed multi. And if I switch to another part, we'll see that they're empty. There's no patches in them, but part one contains this patch. And we can see info on this patch in this notes section over here. You can see the size and some notes on it. And if we click the layers button, we can see the sound sources that are loaded into each of the two layers. And we can change the sound sources by clicking on this folder icon, that's for layer A and layer B. And this brings up the third type of browser, which again looks similar, but this is the sound source browser where we can try out different sound sources. So for example, I can customize the sound. Here's what it sounds like now. And I can change this sound source. Maybe I wanna choose a different type of sound. I'll go to synthesizers, maybe just choose this one just at random. And let's see what this sounds like now. So I've just dramatically changed the sound. I'm closing that by changing the actual sound source that was in layer A, and I can blend the two with these sliders. And remember, all the actual synthesis parameters are still in place. It's the actual sample set only that I've changed here. I can experiment with layer B now and change that one. Let's choose another random one. And we've got a completely different sound now. Completely unique based on different sound sources being loaded into this blurred line times patch that contains all kinds of synthesis mappings. So it's really easy to experiment and come up with your own unique creations simply by calling up patches and changing the layers within already existing patches. So have fun, experiment, try out some of the sounds, and we'll continue with more in the next video.